Hi, Neil. It's wonderful welcoming you to this interview here at the Age Management Medicine Conference. I'm Dr. Florence Comite, and I'm here now interviewing Dr. Neil Rosier. Um, Neil is one of the pioneers in this industry. Uh, Neil started life in medicine as an ER doc, but felt frustrated by all the trauma instead of delivering on health and the promises of health. So he went into the field of hormone optimization and really is one of the leaders. I know that when I have other doctors speak to me at age management medicine conferences, they all speak so highly of how much they've learned from you. Thank you. And congratulations on your award today. Thank you. The Dr. What a Allen surprise that was and what an honor. What, an, what a great honor. You deserve it. Thank you. I, I still do trauma medicine. I still work in the trauma center in Los Angeles. I still do ER medicine. I still do what I'm trained to do. Um, interestingly, the age management medicine that we all do, that, that I teach, is a completely, is completely opposite directions. Um, we treat disease and illness in the ER. We prevent disease and illness with age management medicine. And this is the fun practice. And most physicians are probably not aware of this. They don't know what it is. They're confused. I've heard about it. I'm not quite sure. There's probably nothing better that you can do for your health or your patient, nothing better than you can do for yourself. But most importantly, in spite of the fact that I practiced emergency medicine for 30 years, no one has come back and said, wow, thank you. Thank you so much. You've changed my life. You've made me feel so much better. Whereas with age management medicine, they do that. All of us that do that have these patients, and we see that on a daily basis, that we just don't get to see or appreciate because of the regular practice that we have. But with age management medicine, we do. I think There's, these patients are invested in staying healthy, and they understand that we're there to help teach and guide them and work with them in partnership. There's a part of this practice that makes people feel good. That's what patients want. What makes me feel good is the fact that there's probably nothing probably better healthier than they can do for their long-term health. And most physicians don't grasp it, they don't understand it. In the courses that I teach and of course the, the courses that we get here at AMMG, we look at all the beneficial effects on our long-term health. We look at the medical studies, we look at the science, we look at the literature to show what we should be doing, which is probably not what we're taught or trained in our residencies or in the other academies that we attend. And that's what makes this group so special is that there's so much that we can learn here hormone replacement wise, nutritional wise, stem cells wise, genomics. What medical academy can you go to to listen to a genomics lecture and go and listen to all the different things that we can do now with stem cells? Um, who gives a better talk on nutrition, vitamins, and supplements than Derek? Dr. Zasil is fabulous with that. So this is a venue that is different than probably most other venues that you could attend insofar as you're probably not going to get anything anywhere else that you'll get here at AMMG. I think we're actually looking at the future of medicine here today. And what is hard to understand, because I completely agree with you, and why it's so far in a concept, is if you recall medical school and training, we focus on disease, we focus on trauma, we focus on something's wrong and we're going to get it fixed. What we're interested in is how do we keep our body in its peak physiological health? That goal, seeking that goal, is completely contrary to the practice of medicine in America today. A absolutely it is. We treat disease and illness. You don't have a disease or illness, come back next year. Um, this I've type actually of had patients kicked out of practices for being too healthy. I've had patients call me from different parts of the country to say they went to see their regular doctor. Their doctor looked at their numbers and said, these are amazing. You don't need to see me for two years or three years. You're so healthy. Perfect. What, a great like, treatment to keep you out of the doctor's office. Exactly. That's, that's really what it should be. Well, we be certainly about. want to keep him out of the hospital. Yes. What, and the trauma ward. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, what do we see there? Heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, complications of metabolic disease, which we could all prevent. I, mean, this I think is the, the way only injuries that. I see in patients and the issues are my weekend warriors, where they're working out hard, they play hard. About a third of those are of my patients. And they're the ones constantly giving business to sports medicine doctors. Without the hormones, however, they would not be out there playing and having fun. Without the hormones, they probably wouldn't be healing. Take our courses are because there are patients that we treat, tell the doctors about it. You need to look into this, you need to see this. Mm -hmm. And of course, what floats my boat most is for the physicians to come back and say, you've changed my life, you've changed the life of my practice, 
you've changed the life of my patients, but you've made medicine fun again to practice. That's always that's the key. That's that's the key. What when you um, talk to another physician, what are the main points you want them to understand about where to start? That's a question I get a lot, and you're an expert because I don't do the teaching broadly as you do it. Where do you start with somebody who's coming from a completely alien field? Maybe they're even an anesthesiologist or they're a um, ER doctor like you. How did you go about attaining this base and foundation and knowledge to make the leap into helping people claim optimal health? In my personal circumstance, it just happened 20 years ago and it just snowballed that I came to learn and understand and read and then suddenly teach it. But as far as a newbie is concerned, you probably have to explain, or what I would start off by saying is, you probably don't understand what this is all about. And you have to understand that you don't understand this, but it's extremely important for the health and wellness of everyone to understand it. But this is not what you're topically, typically taught or trained. So once you understand that this may be a foreign concept to you that you don't understand, that's the start. Then how do you start? You take the first step. How do you climb a mountain? You take the first step. Come to AMMG. Come listen to the lectures. Come listen to the presentations. Come look at the exhibits. Come look at the courses that AMMG has to offer to educate you, to show you, and train you how to be that physician. Who do we see in our teaching courses? Well, we used to see family practice doctors, internal medicine doctors, and occasional OBGYNs. Now who do we see? Pain management, ER. I've never seen a pathologist or radiologist up until this past year. And I said, why are, you, why are you here? And they said, medicine is changing. Plus, we're doing it for our own interest because other doctors have done it. They told us, just for your own interest, you have to go there. You have to learn and listen. It's fun medicine again. That's where you start. You start by coming. That's the exciting part. I think that we're actually living in a time where it's going to be possible to work in partnerships and have our patients turn into clients, people who just want to work at maintaining their health. Our patients tell other patients to tell other patients. And my patients come to me and say, we are going to be your patient advocates. You want, to, you, you want us to represent you? You want us to tell other patients? You want to interview us? Let us tell everyone how well we feel and how well we function, how you've given us our life back. That's what brings other patients in. But doctors, we're just not we haven't seen that. We haven't been exposed to that. We don't understand that. We, we treat high blood pressure and diabetes and, and give patients drugs and, and make them not necessarily feel well. It's a foreign concept to us to actually make somebody feel better. That's the most rewarding. Part. And have health benefits on top of it. But most physicians don't understand what optimization of hormones consists of. It's a foreign concept. Your levels are normal. Why do you need hormones if your levels are normal? Well, they're not optimal. Well, where does it say it should be? Come here, we'll explain it to you. We'll show you the data, we'll show you the literature. And then once you can speak to everyone else that's doing it, then you sort of get an idea as to well, maybe I should be doing this. And once you start to do it, it's like, why have I been not doing this for the last 20 years? I think the baseline foundation is not understood, that there is no such thing as normal. And what we're actually looking for is what's right for each unique individual to stay on top of their game and to claim health is instead of rolling downhill by the time you're hitting 35 or 40. And it may be inconceivable. It may be drop by drop every nanosecond. But as that runs downhill, we know we could stop it in its tracks and reverse it and get you back to peak physiological health. That's where I think the aha moment comes, when the doctors themselves realize that this is really possible, that there's data that you can look into as opposed to just hearing the surface sensationalized media and information that's very skewed from a disease-centric model of healthcare that we live in. So well put, exactly. And most physicians, we're just not trained in this. We don't understand it. We don't understand the concept of it. It is evidence-based medicine. It's pure evidence-based medicine. It's in our literature, but it's not put forth in a venue that we can learn from, understand, and see. And this venue does just that. I think so. What I think it does is it makes it clear that instead of living in silos where there's a cardiologist and there's a neurologist and there's an internist, and all these different docs who just look at one little bit part of each of us, 
We're looking at the total human being and how everything connects. And that's where maybe medicine took a misstep. Even though we need all these specialists, we want all those advances, but somehow we have to bring it back to the total human being. And how do we look at the human being? Because making changes in one part of your body or optimizing hormones or metabolism or sleeping better or exercising and working out and eating right, like a low glycemic diet, all work together to get us to the place we need to be. Again, well said, <laughs> precisely. And, and it has to I was be not woven taught that together. Way. I was not taught that. Yeah, right. it's, it's, I was a disease model, disease and illness model. If you don't have a disease or illness, you don't need anything, your levels are fine, yeah. go, go away, come back some other time. What can you do to make me feel better? Nothing. Well, my friend is on hormones and they feel better. My friend is looking fabulous. My friend feels fabulous. I'm gonna go see my friend's doctor. He made me feel fabulous. You need to look into this doctor. Um, I'm an ER doc. I've trained many of the physicians at my facility. It used to be something that was strange and foreign to them. Now when I go to work, before I work a shift, there's 10 doctors lined up outside my office at, going to, wanting to ask me questions about cases and problems that they see in their patients and how to fix them and how to do this. So, and it's cardiologists, it's the OBGYNs, it's the internal medicine doctors, it's the family practice doctors, it's the pain management doctors, unless they come here. Exactly. And then when they come here, yeah. it'll be a, it's definitely an eye-opener for all physicians. Well, I think this has been fabulous. I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add. Yeah. Thank you, Florence. Uh, pleasure as usual. Same here.